Hello guys, my name is Remik and in today's video we're gonna go through the basics of deploying your .NET Web API into the Kubernetes. We're gonna create Docker file for the brand new created .NET Web API, then extract a Docker image out of that and push into the Docker Hub and then we'll use this Docker image in order to create the proper YAML file for the Kubernetes deployment. Make sure to subscribe to this channel to not miss any new videos related to .NET and now, as always, we're gonna go straight into the code. All right, so at first I will create .NET 8 Web API. So in the Visual Studio, I'm gonna pick this one. I'm gonna click Next. And in here, the project name will be Kubernetes Demo API and the solution name Kubernetes Demo. When I will click Next, we'll pick .NET 8 with the long-term support and I'm gonna enable the container support. And also the container build type will be the Docker file. And then I'm gonna click Create. As you see on the screen, I have opened the Docker file that was generated by the Visual Studio for me. But in the case that you don't have any Docker file and you would like to add the Docker support to your API, then I will just remove this Docker file for now. And you can open up the add section of that API by right clicking on the API. Then in the add section, you have the Docker support when you click it and you will select the target OS as the Linux and container build type as the Docker file, it will be generated automatically for you based on the dependencies that you have. And now we're gonna discuss what's inside of that Docker file very briefly. So the first stage, as you see over there, is the official Microsoft ASP.NET Core 8 image that is set as the base. It sets up the non-root user app and then establishes the working directory and expose to ports, so 8080 and 8081. The next stage is called the build stage, as you see over there, and it uses the .NET 8 SDK image to build the application. It sets up the build environment and also it copies the project file and restores the dependencies. So if you have more dependencies to other projects than only one as I have, you should have couple of more lines there just to copy also the other project dependencies in here. And then it restores it, copies the rest of the source code and builds the application at the end. The first stage publishes the application and it's called publish. It's creating the production ready version optimized for deployment. So not the rocket science at all in here. And the last one is the last stage and it starts from the base image once again and it calls this as the final then it gets the working directory as the app and then it copies the published application from the previous stage sets the entry point to run the whole application and now let's quickly pretend that we have multi-layer application and we have for instance the infrastructure layer that could be this class library one and how the docker file will look like with the project dependencies so i'm gonna just add the project reference to this class library one like that and now as before i will just go to the add section and then to the docker support i'm gonna pick as before the linux as the target operating system and container build type as the Docker file. I'm gonna click OK and what we have as an output. So the same as I was discussing this build section of the Docker file, as you see, we have more lines of the copy just to copy all the dependencies that will be needed to build the whole API. Before trying to build an Docker image out of our API based on the Docker file, we have to make sure that you have the Docker desktop installed in your machine. So if you don't have Docker desktop installed, you just have to go into the docker.com and then based on your operating system, download the Docker desktop there. And also we need to have an account in the Docker hub in order to be able to push our image and then use this image in the configuration of the Kubernetes. And now in the program CS file, I'll remove the constraint that if the app.environment is development only, then 
the Swagger UI will be available for us. So I'm just gonna remove that one. And now we can open up the terminal. So you can just go and in the solution directory open in the terminal in the Visual Studio, and then we'll be ready to build our image and then push to the Docker Hub. So now I'm gonna write Docker build, then with the dash F, we have to specify where our Docker file is located. So in that case, it will be the Kubernetes demo dot API with the slash of the Docker file. And now we have to assign the tag for our API. So I'm just gonna use the dash T tag. Now you have to check your account name in the Docker Hub because we'll need this value to assign the tag to our image. So now I'm just gonna continue with that. So it will be my Docker Hub account with the slash of the Kubernetes dash API with the version of one. And now after that, we'll use the space and then the dot just to assign the current directory for that operation. And now when I'll click enter, it will create for us a Docker image. As we see, the local image has been created. So we have my Docker Hub account name and then the name of the API and the tag is V1. And now we can go back to the Visual Studio and now we can push this Docker image into the Docker Hub. So I'll just type Docker, not here. I'm just gonna use the CLS, that case. And now it will be the Docker push and I will use the same name. So my Docker Hub account name and then Kubernetes dash API and the version one. And now we have to make sure that in your terminal, you are locked in to your Docker account. So if you are not, then please just write Docker space login. If you are properly authenticated, now you will be able to push your Docker image into the Docker Hub. So uh, now I'm just gonna press enter and it will be published there. We've received the successful response from the Docker Hub. So it means that our Docker image should be available in our Docker Hub account. So now, as we see, it properly has been pushed. We have that it was pushed two minutes ago. The type is image. We have the V1 tag and also we have the proper name of our image. Now we'll be ready to take this image and then based on that, we'll create the proper configuration for the Kubernetes. To deploy the resources using Kubernetes, you need the access to the Kubernetes cluster, which acts as your server environment where the deployment will run. So it could be either the cloud based or the local Kubernetes setup. And in this tutorial, we'll use the Docker desktop Kubernetes. And in order to enable that, you have to go into the Docker desktop and then to the Kubernetes. And now we have to enable the Kubernetes and then click apply and restart. All right, guys. And now let's dive into the last part of our tutorial. So how to create the deployment.yaml file that will handle our whole configuration related to the Kubernetes. So we'll have to create the deployment.yaml file in our API directory. So I'm going to just add the new file and it will be called deployment. YAML. I'm just going to wipe out the content out of that. Our deployment.yaml file will have two sections. The first one will be related strictly to our .NET 8 web API and will specify there 
the number of the replicas so how many of the pods identical pods we would like to create in our kubernetes cluster in order to properly distribute the load and also keep the high availability and scalability of our solution so now i'm gonna specify the api version it will be called apps v1 and after that we have to specify the kind so the kind will be deployment so related to our api the second section will be related to the load balancer that will distribute the load across our pods so it will be then called service but it will be done later on and now we have to specify also the metadata and in here i'm gonna specify the name and the name will be called kubernetes api deployment And now we have to assign the spec in here and in spec we'll have the number of the replicas so it will be the old replicas and we'll have three replicas of the same api that will be up and running after that we'll specify the selector and in the selector we'll have the match labels match labels and this label will be very important in order to properly connect the load across our pods so we have to use one label across this part of the configuration now i'm gonna call it up and in here it will be the kubernetes dash api the selector defines how the deployment identifies which pod to manage it uses the label app kubernetes api in order to properly match those pods and now we have to go a little bit up and in here we're gonna describe the pod template used to create the new pod so i will just type template and of course in the template we will have the metadata section and in metadata section we'll have as well the labels and in those labels we have to use the same one so app kubernetes api and now we'll define the containers that will run in each pod so i'm gonna use the spec in here and also we'll use the containers keyword And in here we'll just use the name of the container and the name of the container will be kubernetes api of course the image that we're gonna use will be the same that we have pushed into our docker hub before so i'll just use the image And now we have to specify the container port so i'll use the ports in here and the container port will be 8080 and this 8080 i'm getting out of the docker file so as you see it's exposing the 8080 so i'm gonna use as well this container port there and now in this same deployment.yaml file we will just gonna separate those two configurations so the load balancer configuration and also the deployment of our api configuration with that three dashes so now we are gonna create the configuration for the load balancer that will distribute the load across our three pods that we have created there so now we have to also use the api version it will be v1 and the kind will be called service and now we're gonna use as well the metadata part and the name 
and the name will be Kubernetes API service. Now I'll create the specification for that. And as I was referring to before, the selector is very important to use the same one across these two configuration parts. So I'm gonna use this selector in the load balancer part just to properly match the, how the load balancer can distribute the load across the applications, across the ports. So in the specification, I will just use the selector keyword and after that, I'll just type up and Kubernetes API. So it will be the same as over there. After this selector part, we'll use the ports. The protocol will be TCP in that case. And we have to specify the port that will be exposed by the load balancer. And I'm going to use 5000. And the target port has to be the same that we are using for the container port. So it will be 8080. And the type of that service will be the load balancer. So the type load balancer. Before we create our Kubernetes environment based on this deployment.yam file, we have to make sure to delete this additional line between those two configuration parts because it will not recognize that we will have also after that the Kubernetes API service that will be the load balancer. So I will just delete that one. And now in the PowerShell, I'm just gonna type kube ctl apply with the plug of f the deployment.yaml file. As we see, the deployment has been created, so our APIs and also the API service, so the load balancer. And I will just type cube ctl get all. We'll see that we have three pods up and running, so three identical our APIs and also the API service, so the load balancer. One problem that you can face in this section will be the external IP will not be the local host, but it will be pending status. So the pending status means that you have some other zombie process or whatever process that is using your port at the moment. So make sure that this port, so in my case 5000, is free and could be used by this load balancer. In my case, this is the local host, but I'm just telling you that in case that you have some problems with this load balancer. So now once we have everything up and running, we have our load balancer and the free pods. Now we can just access this API by using the local host with the port 5000. So now I'm going to just show you also how it looks like in a Docker desktop. So we see that everything is up and running. And for instance, when I will, when I will stop one of those APIs, as you see, another one was created automatically. So now I'm just gonna go into the browser and I will just access localhost with the port 5000 and the swagger. As you see, I have the localhost 5000 and also the swagger and we'll check if everything works fine. So as we see, the response body from our API has been properly retrieved. So our very simple high availability and scalability setup of the API has been properly added. So if you haven't subscribed my channel yet, I'm just gonna say this once again, just to subscribe to not miss any future videos related to the .NET, to the cloud, and also the Angular React and the Kubernetes and Docker.